Greetings, grave ghouls, to the grey man's Halloween hell screen stream. I am the grey man, and tonight I will be playing you a trio of terror tales that will chill you to the marrow and sever the last threads of the feeble grip you have on your sanity. On this most dark of nights, when the veil treeing the realms is at its finest, it is customary for folks to tell each other scary stories to try and elicit a feeling of dread. Be warned, however, as this game of seemingly harmless fun can act as a summoning of the things from the other side that are seeking access to your world. Your fear acts as a beacon, lighting the way into your soul for the unknown things from beyond that are seeking an escape route from their domain into yours. Talking of an escape route, that's the title of tonight's first story. This tale is torn from the putrid pages of Charlton Borzai number eight from 1982 and is read for us tonight by a stalwart of the YouTube vomit book, <laughs> I mean comic book community, Necro Rog. A cool night, a hot temper, and a ready gun. A common scene, any night, any town USA. Or is it? Come watch with us as a desperate man searches for an escape route. That's right, suspect as a male, Caucasian, 5 feet 10 inches, 180 pounds, last seen proceeding west on foot near the corner of 10th and Bradley. We have the area surrounded. Come on, Jim. I think I saw him run down this way. Man, this place is crawling with cops. But if they get me, I'll be in prison till I rot for ice in that guy. Ugh, I would pick a blind alley. But if I bust into this old high-rise, I might lose him in there. Guess I got no choice. Ah, these babies are no good. If I went up, they'd really have me trapped. Hmm, looks like I'm stuck in here now. Unless... Wait well, a minute, the basement. Yeah, that's it. Some of these old places got sub-basements with connections to the sewers. Maybe I'll beat it yet. Or am I just running like a scared rabbit down in a hole? It's my only chance. I got to, got to find the sewer lead or the boys in blues got me. Plenty of places to hide. But, but that don't do me no good. They'd find me sooner or later. It, it's got to be down here somewhere. Somewhere. Gotta be. Uh, hey. Uh, who, who's this old man? Hey, old man. W wake up. What are you doing down here? That door. That's got to be it. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, well, uh, who me? Uh, me, I'm just doing my job, young fella. If I had a bullet left, I'd waste them. Look, old man, I gotta get through that door. Uh -huh. No, sonny, you don't want to use this door. That's for sure, no, sonny. Look, you old geezer, I don't want to hurt you. But there's about a million cops upstairs looking for me, and that door's my only chance. No, no, you, you don't wanna. I can't let you. Oh man, if you don't move, I'm gonna kill you, understand? Well, what is this anyway? Who are you? What are you down here for? Alright, if it'll stop you, I'll tell you. This here door is the gateway to hell itself, and I've been sent here to guard it. I ain't moved from here in almost 2,000 years. I can't let nobody get through that door, but not for nothing. Long as I set up against that door, 
Things are all right. Now you see why I can't. Bull! I don't know what you act as, Pops, or why you gave me that line, but I'm going. I got life or water staring me in the face if I don't get through that door. Uh -uh. Besides, even if it was true, why would you need a god? Who would want to get into hell? Oh no, Sonny, I never said I was here to keep folks from getting into hell. But from getting out. I... Oh dear, such a shame that unfortunate fellow chose to open the wrong door in pursuit of his escape route and instead provided an entry point for some of those unknown, unquiet things I mentioned before. I hope that one set your hearts palpitating, but let's not dally but instead rush in where angels know better than to tread with our next yucky yarn. This one is guaranteed to make those palpitations increase. It was dragged, kicking and screaming from the witching hour 69 from March 1977 and features the vicious voice talent of malevolent Matilda Gothica. It's called Five Fatal Fingers. <laughs> Even if there's ice flowing through your veins and your spine is made of steel, I dare you to fight the chill and shudder that'll grip you when you see what can happen if you're touched by the Five Fatal Fingers. A hard, torturous day at the office can make any man forgetful. And Calvin Sims is no exception. Whew, I never felt so tired. First thing I'm going to do is hop into a warm bath and... Oh no! How could I have been so foolish? What a fool I am! After all these years! How could I have been so careless about this, this curse I carry? Our new neighbours have been troublesome enough ever since we moved in. Who knows what they do now? That's a good question, Cal. As even now, fevers start to brew. Look what happened to the Sims house. When did he change it over to look like that? And why? How did it happen? It was no more an hour ago. Didn't I warn you? The day they moved in, there was something weird about this Calvin Sims. We all knew he was strange. What with all those animals that are delivered and those gloves. He never takes them off. Calvin, I hear people out there. Is something wrong? I, I'm not sure, dear. There's been a slight uh, accident and... Look out, Beatrice! Who broke our window? Just some kids, playing baseball. Good work, Rainy. That ought to show him we mean business. If it doesn't, we'll just have to teach him a few harder lessons. Oh, Calvin, what are you hiding from me? Don't you think I know the difference between the sounds of a baseball and a rock? Beatrice, do you remember the promise you made when we were married? I know, never do. Ask any questions, and I never do. Not about the animals, or the gloves, but why is it, whenever I step out of the house, I sense nothing but fear around me? Just trust me, Beatrice. Someday, I'll be able to explain everything to you. When? After you're dead? She's right. It can't go on much longer without one of us getting hurt. And wherever we move to, it'll be the same. Poor cow is still sweating out his problem. When a few nights later, 
There he goes again. He still didn't take my hint. Well, one little accident will settle the whole matter. Huh? The crazy fool, he's trying to kill me. What's happening to my car? It, it turned into a, a rusty old hulk, a piece of junk. Calvin, what's all the commotion? Get inside, Beatrice, quick. But Calvin, I... Stop! Don't come near me till I get my glove back on. I guess it's time to tell you about the gloves that I never take off, even when I'm sleeping, and about the animals in the basement. Where do I begin? With the slave on my plantation over 150 years ago. Calvin, if you're making up a story... But it's true, every word of it. He had been an African witch doctor, reputed to have strange powers. One day, he asked me what I'd take to return for his freedom, and I answered, eternal life. He agreed, provided I'd accept the curse that came with my wish. What kind of curse? Oh, this place, it reeks of death and decay. That's the curse, Beatrice. Anything I touch shrivels up, ages and dies. And yet, it's the curse that also keeps me alive. My body exists off the life it drains from others. Trees, metals, anything that contains a single living molecule. I, I, I don't know whether to believe you or to call the insane asylum. My life was lonely, Beatrice, until I met you. Someone I could care for and love. We've got to get away from here before... It, it's too late. Sims, we're tired of suggesting that you leave this neighbourhood. Now we're going to make sure you do. Rainy, for your own good, don't come near me. I'm warning you. And I'm warning you, Sims. I'm not afraid to use this rifle. No, you have to shoot me first. Beatrice! Oh my God! What? What's happening? Suddenly I feel so old and tired. Calvin, forgive me for doubting you. Now I know. You were telling the truth. <gasps> did, did, did you see that? She just wizened up and died. Let's get out of here before he comes at one of us. They'll be back soon enough with the police. It's all over for me unless I flee too. Far, far away. But why should I? For what reason? Before I met you, Beatrice, I wanted to die anyhow, to end my eternal agony. Just by touching something, draining off its life force, transferring it to myself, I could easily remain alive forever. But now that you're gone, my darling, the only thing I cherished, what have I to live for? Somewhere in the distance, a clock starts to toll the hour of midnight. It's happening fast now. Nothing left in me. To give me life. of ashes is all that remains of them. Hmm. Anybody interested in a slightly used pair of gloves? Well, that was fun, wasn't it? A haunting tale of love, loss, nosy neighbours, and bargains best left unmade, and curses that caused their victims comeuppance. So, viewers, are you suitably shocked now, and cowering in fear, praying for the daylight to come? Or maybe you are of hardier stock, and are still feeling brave, secure in your safe houses. Perhaps you are to believe in the supernatural and think yourself immune to things that go bump in the night. 
feeling like a king in your castle, all protected in your sanctuary from the shadowy entities of nightmare. Well, this last story may just disavow you of these bold notions. Plucked from Tower of Shadows 8 from November 1970, this story is told for us by the Traction Roy Corpse and is called Sanctuary. When the warrior king Hammond conquered the ancient land of Cybernia, his coming roused the antagonism of powerful forces, most of which were more or less human, but also of one who was not. Sanctuary. The assault on the walls is beaten back. A weary king summons his court magician, the wise Abarak. You look ill, your highness. Allow me to prepare a potion for you. No, I am only tired. So very tired. Take over for me. He stumbles to his chamber on leaden feet, his sword dropping from nerveless fingers. And barely reaches his bed, falling across it asleep at once. What disturbs his sleep he does not know, but he suddenly starts up, his heart beating wildly. What? Who? And then he sees a familiar dreaded figure. No, it, it cannot be. The thing approaches. Hammond listens, sick with horror, as it begins to speak. Yes, it is I. You did not believe the ancient law, but now you shall. You conquered but could not rule Cybernia. Then one day you learned of the existence of Dragon Inge and the tomb of the Druid King from a captured rebel. Oh, we cannot serve anyone who does not wear the crown of ancient kings. Very well. I shall go to the tomb and get the crown. How will I find this place? I will tell you where it is, your majesty, if you will spare my life. Done. The wretch that gave you the location of the tomb, but Abarak had misgivings. I have heard legends of this dragon hinge, and also of a curse. Nevertheless, I am going. Now take this villain and execute him. Uh. Next day, he found you to the entrance. You must go on alone, sire. I dare not go farther. Then farewell, good Abarak. I shall return wearing the crown, or I shall not return at all. Fighting a growing sense of panic, you descended endless flights of stairs, coming at last to a massive metal rod door, which swung open effortlessly, admitting you to the subterranean city. The feeling of being watched began and grew as you proceeded. And then you entered our tomb, the sacred resting place of generations of druid kings which no man had ever seen and lived. There it is, the crown. As you took the crown, you observed something which has haunted your dreams ever since. His eyes, they are opening. Then on your way back to your castle, you looked back, just once. Your eyes were not playing tricks, mortal. I followed you here and will continue to follow you to your death. 
I cannot return to my eternal rest until the violation of my tomb has been avenged. Prepare to die, for your time has come. No, help me! Help! Oh, oh. it is you, Abarak. And it was only a dream. A terrible dream. Yes, you screamed, sire. Tell me about it. Briefly, Hammond tells his wizard of the dream. But I know the dead cannot harm the living, and so I am determined to complete my tower. Working day and night, his vassals build the king a mighty fortress. Now I will see what I can do, sire. What man can do, magic can improve. And Abarak works a spell upon the wall. The stones and mortar are joined. This tower will stand forever. For a time, Hammond feels secure behind his strong walls. But then, one night... No! It cannot be! I must be going mad! Demon warriors mounted on monstrous birds launch an aerial assault on the tower. No! It cannot be! Ah! Then Hammond wakens. Another dream! But so very real, so vivid! It is an omen, a warning. I must put a roof on my tower. Soon the roof is done. A metal roof? Our king is clever. I that are frightened. Oh, boo. Again, the wizard does his work. Now you are certainly safe, my lord. No being, natural or supernatural, can pass that mystic symbol. But the very next night, I heard a sound. What? We've got to protect it from below! A score of hideous, inhuman shapes burst from the hard-packed earth and attack the hapless king. No! Oh, help! Save me, Abarak! He flees up the stairs until at last there is nowhere to run. Something seizes him and then he realizes. Oh no, again! I was dreaming again. But this time, I very nearly leaped to my death. I cannot even trust myself. What am I to do? We must seal the tower off completely from the rest of the castle. I will design one secret door. Yes, yes, I must be safe. Fill in all the doors and windows. And soon the work is underway. Abarak has the workmen install one door, which can only be opened from within. And the ground beneath is paved and protected against entry by magic. The last stone is in place, Lord. It is all done. Yes, except for one thing. You, you men know the secret of the door. I'm sorry, but your existence endangers me. Therefore, you must die. <laughs> Safe at last. No power on earth can harm me now, neither man nor demon. Aye, your highness. I can sleep again, sure that no one can enter, for only you and I... Yes, your majesty? Only one other person on earth even knows where the doorway is. Abrak. If he were to die... Quick as thought, the king's blade flashes out at the aged wizard. But... Abarak, you still stand! What manner of being are you? Or is your magic greater than I knew? 
Neither your sword nor your tower can save you now, foolish man, for I am not Abarak. The real Abarak is long since dead. He never returned from Dragonhenge. But then, who? What? And have you not guessed? I caused the dreams which made you build this tower. This tower which is now your prison and your tomb. For when you try the door, you will find it will not open for you. As he realizes the trap he had built for himself, Hammond begins to scream. His royal vassals try to force the tower. In vain. At length, unable to stand the sound of his mad terror, they open the gates and flee into the night. Until the castle stands empty and deserted, save for one man in a stone tower who screams for a very long time. The end. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that terrible tale, viewers? Do you still feel emboldened and secure in your happy homes? Or have the walls started to feel like they're closing in on you? Stifling, suffocating, like the walls of a tomb or the inside of a cheap coffin. Well, luckily for you, if the things from the other side haven't been able to get at you already, then you might just be safe for another year. Or perhaps they are already in and are just biding their time. Be patient. They have been, after all. I will say farewell now, viewers. Thank you so much for watching. Perhaps I'll see you again next year if you are still on this mortal plane. Have a pleasant night, humans, and do have nightmares, won't you? <laughs>